lot of people in my previous video commented that I didn't go into enough detail on the Kimi accident itself, and that's a fair criticism. There is a lot of missing information still as Ferrari refused to elaborate on what went wrong or what systems they have in place, so I'll have to indicate which parts are what we'll call likely rumours. Also, I will be showing footage of the incident, but I promise I won't show the actual bit where Francesco Sigarini gets hit, because that's just grim. So don't worry about that, I won't show that. So firstly, we see once Kimi stops, the rear wheel mechanics all align themselves in identical formation around the wheel. There's been some criticism from some parts of Sigarini for standing in front of the wheel, but this is the optimal stance for getting the new wheel on. Uh, what's interesting if you look is that his position isn't mirrored exactly, he's the only um, wheel putter on a guy who's in front of the wheel, everyone else is on the back side of the wheel. Or you could say the mechanic on the front left tyre is the only guy bringing the new tyre in from the right hand side, so I wonder if this is to do with handedness. Either way, Sigarini wasn't in an unusual position. Moving forward a bit, we see these three tyres go on pretty much in sync. The front jack operator is already moving out of the way by the time the wheels are on the hubs. These three tyres are already being screwed in, but the rear left isn't even off yet. So obviously Sigarini is still standing in position, waiting. At this point, the jack operators drop the car. Now there is speculation here that the rear jack operator dropped the car A, to give the left wheel nut a jostle if it was a bit stuck, or B, to give the wheel gun a little bit more torque, that's the turning force, by getting the tyre on the ground. And when you watch the footage though, I think it's quite clear that both the front and rear jack operators are just releasing the car as standard. They probably haven't even noticed the problem as they're just used to the procedure and have seen the other tyres going on just fine. Remember how quickly this all happens. Watch the rear jack in real time. So what's interesting then is what was actually going on with this rear left tyre, and how the traffic light got the signal to go. Despite the simple three loop thread of the wheel nuts, obviously they can still get stuck sometimes, and a likely culprit here is cross threading. This means the screw threads aren't aligned correctly, so the wheel nut won't rotate smoothly along with the thread as it's undone. Think about when you screw up a bottle lid sometimes and it goes wonky and then gets stuck. That's cross threading. A cross threading normally happens when the nut is being tightened, so if it was cross threaded then it could have happened when the wheel was attached, and this had gave it plenty of time to completely mess up the thread through his stint. So the wheel is stuck on the axle and you can see mechanics faffing about with it, even after the other tyres are on, even after the car is dropped. And this brings us to the next point, or educated speculation of likely rumours. Um, the word on the pit lane is that Ferrari and possibly Haas, and you know probably loads of other teams to be honest, have automatic sensors in the pit guns. Now these wheel guns have been measuring and recording the torque for years because teams like to go back and analyse every aspect of a pit stop, particularly if they aren't going as well as they'd like them to. But Ferrari are apparently working with a system that activates the go signal to the traffic light once the wheel registers the correct torque pattern. Now this could be when the gun registers a massive torque spike once the nut is tight and the gun literally can't push any harder, or it could be when the gun freeze up as it's pulled out. Either way this is ripe for false positive signals as if the wheel nut is stuck there's no way for that sensor to differentiate that from the wheel being ready to go. There's a hell of a risk for a tenth of a second. Is this Ferrari's system? Mm, right now the exact details aren't clear because everyone's keeping stum, but this is exactly why we may need some mandatory systems in place that allowed for speedy pit stops but puts a little more of safety margin in for people working in the pit lane. Even a rule that says no automatic signal systems is good enough for me. But what do you think?